Here at Maverick, we have built our success on delivering beautiful, unique products in partnership with our customers. With bespoke designs and materials, many of our products have been considered Maverick within our industry. Within our Maverick Meat series, we are excited to speak to a range of tastemakers, craftsmen and women alongside property experts to explore the bold and the beautiful within arts and design. Hi Rosie, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, it's a little surreal because I was a really big Main and Chelsea <laughs> fan growing up. Um, and I appreciate this is a really busy time of year for you with your jewellery brand. Can you tell us a bit about that? Thank you so much for having me. Um, so I started my brand seven years ago. Wow. And um, yeah, I own 100%. It is just me and I do absolutely everything for the business, like every single part from some days I wrap orders. Um, I actually went in for Black Friday. I mean, it's just a crazy time oh of year. Gosh. And um, I spent my Sunday listening to podcasts, blasting music, and just in the office on my own for like 11 hours wrapping really? orders. But sometimes you just, you've got to get stuck in and get it done or yeah, it gets too hectic. Is everything <laughs> online with your business? Yes, so I sell everything online and I do have a small selection of stock in Harvey Nichols. Yeah in Knightsbridge, um, but my main focus really is just online. So yeah, so you said that you obviously own 100% of it. Yes. That's amazing. Do you have anyone that works with you? Helps you do all the packing? Yes, yes, I do. Um, I've got one amazing um, full-time employee, and then I have a couple of other people that work sort of freelance. Um, I did have someone else earlier this year, but I've kind of taken over that role now, and actually I think we're in a really good sync at the moment. Yeah. And I love being in the office. I love being in the office more. I love being really present. And obviously some days I'm like running around in meetings and yeah. I'm here today. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I love being in the office. I think it's really important to be present yeah. and there. Obviously the brand is named after you. So yeah. the fact that you have such an input in it is obviously really important as well. And you're just managing and overseeing everything as well yeah and I'm also a bit of a control freak so like you know <laughs> sometimes I just like to be on top of everything in control yeah fully aware I feel like it kind of sometimes gives me a bit of anxiety when I relinquish control yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I've learned how to do that now in yeah. aspects but um at the moment yeah it's just it's it's working well we've yeah. got a good uh, good vibe going on That's so all the designs is that all kind of your your designs yeah so i basically do everything and um i do draw like a child though um <laughs> i have to admit i'm very bad at drawing but my i use two different well three different factories now for the jewelry but um well two for the jewelry one for the watches but both of them are really good at um making CAD drawings yeah. so I don't have to outsource that they make the CAD drawings for me so I'll send my sketches mm -hmm. and you know they're bad <laughs> but I'll send the measurements of everything to the millimeter you know that the length of an earring the width yeah. that sort of thing and I'll send all the measurements and then I'll write detailed notes with each one for the samples so reiterate the sizing talk about them how I want them to sit mm -hmm. what type of earring are they a stud or a hoop that kind of thing just all the details and then, um, you know, quite more often than not, the factories, you know, can understand my drawings. So that's, <laughs> that's amazing. They yeah. get your vision. <laughs> yes, it must exactly. be so nice sort of sketching it and then seeing them give you like a real life. Yeah, definitely. Version. When you see the CAD drawings, you're like, right, yes, they've got the right yeah. idea. Mm. Um, or no, they haven't. Or actually, that looks great either way. Sort of <laughs> yeah. Thing. So, um, so yeah, getting the CAD drawings are always really exciting. And where do you get where do you get your inspiration from like how you know how do you get to doing these designs so I literally just keep my eyes open everywhere I go yeah. um love it when I'm away on holiday when I'm abroad and I can actually just really take myself away from the office take myself away from meetings and distractions and really just open my eyes to shapes or colors yeah. um anything can inspire me really well, so I just always have to keep an eye out and have a good open creative mind yeah well your jewelry is so colorful and like there's so many yes. statement pieces it's just really fun thank you no, do you have a favorite country for inspiration um 
I went to Bali earlier this year, which was um, lovely. Yeah. And just anywhere warm that I can also <laughs> relax. <laughs> yeah. Have a cocktail in the sun. Yeah. And so is that is it relaxing that kind of brings all the ideas? Yeah, kind of. I think when I'm in London, I find it really hard if I'm at home or in the office. It, there's always something yeah. that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I'm always working in the evenings. I'm always working on the weekends. So actually, when I'm away, that is really when I get mm. a chance to switch off and start thinking about like I'll take pictures of colors or shapes when I'm out and I can then actually sort of have a debrief with myself and be like, right, let me go through my folder of different aspects of inspiration yeah. and what feels good next. Um, yeah. So is it mainly like visual stuff? You take pictures and you kind of more have like a bank of stuff you look at? Yeah, it's, it's more visual really, but also yeah. shapes, styles, that sort of thing. And have you always wanted to be a jewelry designer? So I've always, always been obsessed with jewelry. I've been like a magpie since <laughs> I was a child, always trying on my mum's rings. And then I guess when I started buying jewelry myself, I've worked and sort of made money really since I was 16. So sort of, you know, you save up, you go onto net porter you buy yourself some nice rings and then before you know it, they've tarnished and you're mm. like, what? <laughs> I spent like 300 quid on these rings and they've tarnished already and it really got me thinking about, you know, you can't just buy into designer brands because you're paying for the, the label and yeah. not the quality, quality yeah. so I really wanted it I just really made me realize that there weren't a huge amount of demi fine jewelry brands out there and I really wanted to be able to launch a brand that was great quality but also more affordable yeah. so it wasn't just saving up for birthday or Christmas you could treat yourself yeah. or treat a friend or you know if you've had a bad week you know yeah nothing's better than a, a little delivery yeah, yeah for sure um so, yeah, yeah so you can buy your stuff all year round like it definitely yeah, is exactly. affordable but more on the higher end yeah so it's interesting you mentioned craftsmanship because that's obviously a big part of what we do so bespoke Absolutely. furniture um we have artisans in europe um who obviously with the furniture it takes a while to make um yeah. lead times around eight weeks from like the initial design um so kind of what's in with the process of your jewelry, what is the lead time in terms of like getting the design to getting the actual um, piece of jewelry? Yeah, so I, it's actually very similar for me. It's also about eight weeks yeah. um, for the factories. So sampling is faster actually. Um, and then once the samples are confirmed, then it's about eight weeks once I order the stock. So I do have to plan ahead mm -hmm. and sometimes samples literally will be perfect the first time and i'm like great sometimes they're not and yeah. time and time and time again i'm actually launching a valentine's collection that i shot last week that um obviously early early next year and um heart-shaped stones and we went back and forth and back and forth and back really? and forth and i'm like god finally yay i get to launch this collection but yeah, you want to make sure it's perfect. But then also, because you know, with the lead times are longer, you also mm. know that you've kind of got a set date that you maybe want to launch by yeah. or that sort of thing. So when do you start that sort of process? Obviously, you want your product ready for February. Yeah. How far before do you need to start planning it? So I've actually ordered in, I've actually got all the stock already and we did the photo shoot already. I just thought, strike while the iron's hot it's yeah. all lined up let's just order it you know in case something happens in case something happens to the factory i don't know anything could happen these days which yeah. i think we all know about mm, i'm sure you definitely. guys had lots of delays yeah maybe with covid as well and yeah. it's just yeah it's a nightmare so i just thought i'll order it all in and have it ready so it actually arrived this week which is great because it just means i haven't got any you know calling customs and calling up yeah. fedex and yeah. panicking and cutting it really fine so i like to work in advance but i don't launch collections at any specific times of the year because it's not seasonal so it's just sort of as and when i'm ready and i mm. want to so I, it kind of works then you know if, if we do have to delay it by a week it's not the end of the world yeah i think if it's kind of so seasonal it's kind of rushed yes and it might not have as much kind of thought behind it yeah and I think also with longevity as well I'm sure you guys know with like mm. incredible pieces of furniture you're buying something for your home yeah for good you yeah. know the centerpiece of your kitchen is the dining room table mm -hmm. you take a lot of consideration into what you're designing and what you're making and yeah it's an investment piece yeah. as well and you really want it to be perfect so you know same with my jewelry they're not sort of just 
throwaway items yeah. Yeah. that they're really considered pieces that people treasure. Yeah. yeah. And um, what is in your Valentine's collection? So it, I'm actually launching a uh, heart-shaped jewelry box, like my oh, smiley nice. ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, the smiley ones are super popular. They've actually just sold out, but I'll be getting them back in very soon. Uh, we're doing a heart-shaped box and heart-shaped stones and heart-shaped earrings. And yeah, I'm really excited. Oh, that really sounds cute. lovely. Yeah. Um, and how do you stay on top of trends? Obviously, do you just have to kind of see what other people are doing or how does that work? Um, well, for me, really, because I'm not seasonal, it's all just all about me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I, you feel like doing. Yeah, I just design what I want, That's which nice. I love. Yeah. And I listen to my customers and I love getting feedback from customers about what they want or what metals they prefer or stone colors. Um, so it's really nice to sort of reach out and speak to people. And yeah, but I just really design what I want, what I feel like. And if it works great and if it doesn't then I I'll like the it. Next one. <laughs> what is yeah. your what is your favorite finish? Like brass, silver? So I love mixing metals. Mm -hmm. Um I used to be a, you know, gold girl, never strayed from gold, but I love mixing in rose gold. Yeah. I love mixing in uh silver mm -hmm. and yeah, I think you can really mix your metals these days. Definitely. You obviously said that your customers kind of let you know what they what styles they like yeah. and what they're looking for do you reach out to them like maybe on your story and ask for feedback or do they direct message you so yeah i love doing a q a on instagram stories yeah um with the followers and with customers and also um yeah sometimes just people dm and they're like oh i really want this piece and or the charms, I do all of the charms just in gold and they really, sometimes they want them in silver, but to be honest, I don't have enough people requesting in silver oh, to, really? do, to make them yeah, in yeah. silver. Um, but yeah, I do take everything into consideration because obviously it's really important Yeah, that I also, you know, create what my customers want. Yeah. So. Well, it's also nice that they can just message you and you're yeah. actually reading it, you yeah. know, it's, it's you, you're designing it um and like their opinions get heard yeah. so that's probably like a good investment for them as well definitely and i think it's really important especially because the brand is under my name yeah i think sometimes people like expect you know they want a reply from me they want to know that they're yeah speaking to me so no, that's yeah and i think it. having it under your own personal brand just builds a lot of trust and people trust the personal brand right if it's kind yeah. of like a faceless brand yeah then it, it's not as kind of personal yeah i think it's i think that's true i also think it can be really difficult sometimes because sometimes i just want to hide away and just be mm. like oh my god you know <laughs> sell some shares yeah. yeah go and have some babies and yeah. just maybe uh, one day <laughs> but one day i'll do that for sure what i will say though that i find wild is that people will dm you and asked to like exchange something yeah. which blows my mind because i would never dm net a quarter <laughs> yeah. and be like yeah. yo so <laughs> yeah that dress i bought can i have an exchange like it is wild <laughs> these days but you have to be i guess people just use sec social media as yeah. a second nature that they mm. just think that that's okay yeah. yeah which is fine but i always just say to people you know please email us yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you get a lot of messages on your you've obviously got a brand and instagram yeah. for both yeah i manage both of them yeah so do you get messages on your personal about yes. the jewelry yes and advice? i yeah. mean what the one the one time that i actually think it's actually really offensive is when and i've told to so my employee who's full-time she doesn't she she didn't work for us last uh christmas she joined just after so she said you know what's it like around christmas i'm like <laughs> People DM me my personal Instagram and say that they've received a ring that doesn't fit on Christmas Day. Oh God. <laughs> there's, there's a line, isn't there? There is, yeah. but there's no line for people, I think. You know, in the age of social media and it's so easy just to message or do whatever, there yeah. is no line, yeah. you know? So I get messages and emails on Christmas Day of people that are like, I've got this ring and it's mm. too small or too big. But you know, Boxing Day, I am replying to emails because I'm just like, I'm the, the type of person who replies to people's emails over yeah. the weekend. I just would rather reply and get them done than yeah. have set hours. I'll have a backlog of things to get back to when you exactly. are actually working. Exactly. Um, and you've obviously just launched a new watch collection. Yes, I have. Can we see the one you're wearing? So I'm wearing the steel today. Yeah. 
And I'd say it. actually, Amazing. when I was talking about always being a gold girl, like wearing steel has really got, well, this is stainless steel, but my silver is actually white rhodium plated sterling silver. So it's just mm -hmm. like a brighter silver. Yeah. Um, but this steel watch, I just, I'm obsessed with. Yeah, I love the gold, but it's just got me back into wearing more silver, which I really love. Yeah. Um, I went, actually went out last night and my sister was wearing hers and I was like twinning. Oh. Um, and yeah, so I've been in the process of making them for over a year. Um, when I had COVID after my birthday last year, I was at home and I was like, right. Said to the girls in the office, right, I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to spend the whole week researching factories, speaking to factories. Mm etc etc so just please deal with the customer emails please deal with all of this the orders everything i obviously can't come into the office this is what i'm going to focus on and it was actually the best use of my time i am just not somebody that can even when i'm hungover i cannot just lie in bed and watch netflix yeah. or whatever i just can't that's yeah. not who i am so i just really used my week and just absolutely went turbo <laughs> into sourcing a factory yeah. And I found like no, one. No distractions. Kind no, of, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes you just need that time. Yeah, for sure. And I found a factory. Then we did, I did a first sample of the watches that was actually shinier. Um, and spoke to friends and kind of got feedback. And the decision was to make them matte how mm -hmm. they are now. Yeah. Um, it then made the factory. So the, I paid for like my own mold. I had to do, you know, intellectual property contracts. It was all very scary because it was a brand new factory and watches mm -hmm. is like a whole different ball game. Yeah. You have to do all of this factory testing with them for really? chemicals, for lead, for cadmium, for everything. And um, so yeah, it was, it was so much work went into them and it's just been so exciting this year to get the second sample for them to be perfect. I was just, so happy and then the timing was right and I was like oh my god we're going to be able to launch for Christmas oh, so it was amazing. just so exciting and we had them on pre-order initially and we said that it would be about two weeks for delivery we got sent them early and I you know went in again at the weekend to go and wrap loads of them so I could make sure I could mm. get them out early for people knowing that it would make everyone really happy so this week for the first time I've been like been sent messages from customers with photos of them wearing them Aww. and I just can't even explain how good that feels yeah so how long was that when you first initially had the idea for watches to now mm. your, like a year customers a year wow. a year wow um so Is that rewarding. like the best the best feeling yes kind of finally I did, um, I did a launch breakfast for them with friends and some influencers and mm -hmm. press. And I really felt like I really wanted to celebrate them. And I yeah. never really sort of spend money on things like that and do big launches. But yeah. I just thought I, you know, I've bloody grafted over them <laughs> yeah. for so long. It's time to celebrate, but also celebrate with friends as well. And just really enjoy the moment yeah. instead of just yeah. sitting in the I office think and with business especially it's kind of hard to enjoy the milestones because it's like yeah. once that's done the next thing absolutely started, yeah. so you're you always really yeah you're always thinking about the next thing yeah. aren't you it's like you tick that box and you're like right what's next yeah. and there's still other stresses going on in the business yeah. it's not always you've launched and everything's perfect there's yeah still other things going on yeah and you've got to but i think it's really important to actually take a moment to pause yeah. and breathe and and be proud of yourself yeah. and that milestone as well. Yeah. Or you're just constantly chasing, chasing, chasing. You're not actually appreciating the moment. So I really made sure I did that with the watches. And, you know, I was super proud. I can't believe I launched watches like OMG. Yeah. Because yeah. I bet you didn't, when you started, you didn't really think you'd be doing that. No, but I just, I have collected watches over the years. And um, I have several really nice watches and now in london especially it is so dangerous true, yeah. to wear your watches mm -hmm. and especially as a woman and i just thought this is bloody ridiculous <laughs> yeah. i've worked hard i've saved up and i've treated myself to incredible pieces that i literally sit in a safe and i yeah. can't wear yeah i was like right i'm gonna take this into my own hands it's time i'm gonna create my own that look really nice that are great quality that look expensive, but you yeah. know, hopefully we, you won't get stabbed for. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, that, and, yeah, and it's what, bleak, but it's it, yeah. it's so true. Yeah. Like you feel on edge wearing on it, edge, yeah. so it's better just to to leave it at home. Yeah. Um, how much do your watches retail for? Three hundred and twenty pounds. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's affordable. Mm. And what sort of finishes do they come in? So this is the steel, and then so the steel has a white stone bezel, and then the rainbow. Sorry, the gold has a rainbow stone bezel. Nice. But that thing about wearing expensive watches is actually so true. Yeah. yeah. I think but it's then, such a good idea because your watches look amazing. Yeah. Thank and you. It's, you're not at risk of obviously. But then my sister did say that they look so nice that like, you know, they could yeah, they look could like They might uh, think that they're really, I know. really expensive. Yeah. But I mean, for now, you've just, uh, yeah, I just, it's, it's crazy at the moment. Yeah. yeah, it is. I had my bag stolen last <gasps> week. What? In London. No. Yeah, my we... backpack. I was a bit stupid. I put it on... I was trying something on in a shop and I kind of put it on the clothes hanger for a second while oh. I like looked in the mirror and I turned around and it was gone. It's absolutely so, madness. Yeah, mm. lost all my makeup. Oh no. <laughs> and the other stuff, but that was what really yeah. got to me. I was like, all my essential oh, makeup. Oh, it's so inconvenient. So inconvenient. So yeah. selfish. Luckily it was Black Friday weekend though, so I reeled it yeah. and got a discount. <laughs> um, you can see from your socials that you're very well dressed and you have a really lovely style. Thank Does you. that transition into your home? Like, how do you style your home? So, at home, God, I feel like I just don't spend that much time at home and I slightly neglect it, but I do have some cool art and I've got a big neon sign um, in my sitting room that actually I got made 10 years ago before, or 12 years ago before I started my jewelry brand. And it says, check my diamonds, they're flawless. <laughs> really? And it's pink really neon. Well. And it's above my sofa, which I Love had recovered that. in magenta pink velvet. Wow. Which I adore. I just felt like I needed a bit of a girly, cozy um, situation. Yeah. And I have some nice cushions and blanket on the sofa. But I also, um, I've made my office really nice because clearly I spend half, yeah. more than half my life there. <laughs> um, so we have like a really cool sofa in the office um the walls are painted pale pink and some of them have different colors as well and um it's very girly very girly really fun just a nice creative space like i go into the office and i just love it again i bought really cool art for the walls i got this above my desk i have this cool piece by nat bowen that's like pinky orangey neony and i've got the basquiat skateboards as well on nice. the wall and I've also got, which is so cool, I've got this Louis Vuitton bodyboard against the wall. <laughs> wow. Uh, which is like pink and yellow. Again, just very colorful. Yeah. And then I've got all of the Aceline books, you know, all the bright yeah. ones, like Ibiza, Marrakesh, all of them. There, the Louis, Louis oh, really? One. Yeah, yeah, I love a good coffee table yeah. book, but I've stacked them upright so you can see the nice colors. You're very and colorful. I love I'm that. very colorful, but I just think as well, like if I'm. I love going to the office. It's a 10 minute walk from where I live, which is Perfect, ideal. Yeah. And it's my happy place. I wanted to make it such a nice space so that, you know, my employees would enjoy being there. I would enjoy being there. So I think, yeah, decorating the place around you and having great furniture and mm. great interiors is just so important. Where do you think, like, that you're clearly so creative. Where did that stem from? Um, like your, your parents then, creative industry? So my father's actually in the art world he's a fine art consultant um and my mum's always been incredible at doing up houses mm -hmm. interiors um laying the table for dinner parties she always <laughs> sends me pictures and she's mm -hmm. like look at my table That's like our mum. <laughs> so i think and my sister's super creative i just think we've got that buzz yeah. i yeah. guess that's nice yeah. you're obviously yeah. surrounded by it yeah so. i love it yeah nice. um you you obviously wear very nice designer brands. How important do you feel it is to buy luxury? So I think it's all about investing in good key investment pieces. Yeah. So for instance, I'm wearing a designer blazer right now, but my leather shorts are from Zara and my boots are from Zara. So it's about kind of yeah. mixing the high and the low, like really yeah. investing in pieces that you'll wear for life, like a blazer. Um, or heels or handbags but um, again it goes it's the same for your home I think mm -hmm. something like an incredible dining room table is the center point of a home yeah, yeah. 
and you know you're eating there you're having meals with your family you're making memories you're chatting you're having fun you're entertaining I think it's really important um bedding is really important beds are important but then you know there's some other pieces that you don't have to sort of you can have more fun with I don't know cutlery napkins Mm. plates yeah Yeah. and what is the favorite your favorite room in your house so at home I would say I would just say it's my bedroom yeah I've got a really comfortable bed I've got a really nice (laughs) throw on my bed and cushions and I love cooking I love the kitchen but I don't actually I was talking about my bright pink sofa which I adore but actually I never sit sit on it and watch television I thought you were gonna say your living room to be honest no (laughs) I don't actually I can't remember the last time I sat down and watched television it's mad too busy probably too busy so I love kind of getting cozy in the evening and sitting on my bed and working or putting Mm. something on while I work or like write notes for I, my life is a constant stream of notes what I have on that day the mm. next day the next day things to remember yeah. so um, my bedroom but then you know my office for me is also if, if, you, if you can let me pick something away from home I'd say my office is, is a really happy place for me yeah so obviously you're kind of a founder CEO now yeah um, did you kind of just learn through experience with business was there kind of any any degrees in business or anything? Or was it just pure experience and getting going? Just working from the ground up, making yeah. mistakes and learning. Mm-hmm. Um, which, I mean, I actually haven't, I only did a business plan last year, six years really? in. Wow. Uh, I did a Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business course, which was incredible. And um, yeah, their program was just unbelievable and we built a three to five year growth plan and also made a business growth plan where I kind of went back to the start and it was a really good way to actually Mm. think you know set out the core values of your business and your vision and I never did that from the start so if any people often ask me for advice about business and and I love helping people out. And actually now it's really good to take that information to them and be like, right, it's really important to start with your values and your vision and um, lots of other things. But I really just learned on my own. And um, I kind of liked it that way. Yeah. But I wouldn't obviously do it that way again. Like yeah. I'm glad I, I, I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's so good you've got all that stuff now, but I think the most important thing is to start, which is what you did. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's also really great that you learn every aspect of the business, yeah. especially because I've never gone into this to just grow a company to sell. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a passion project and I love what I do. And you know, I'm not just going to throw it away. I wanted to learn every aspect and I wanted to get stuck in with everything. So yeah. I didn't have anyone pulling the wool over my eyes for anything. And I was yeah. really involved with every aspect. When you started Made in Chelsea, and I think it was 2011, yeah. did you go into that kind of thinking that it would give you a pedestal to start your own business? Or was it just a bit of fun at the time? So I had just left um, Goldsmiths university where I did a history of art degree and I was actually asked to do a show very similar when I had just started Goldsmiths and as I was leaving I was asked by another production company to do Made in Chelsea so I did the pilot and I just started my fashion blog and I thought you know what if I can run this alongside and my twin sister and all of my friends at boarding school took gap years so I kind of was one year ahead of them and I thought you know what why not try this for a year but I was shy. I mean, I am shy. I'm like, I, I, w- I did not do drama at school. I am not a sort of out there person. I never grew up thinking, oh my God, I want to be on television. That was so not my thing. Yeah. Like, my family were like, whoa. <laughs> really? Really? And I was <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like I've got a year to play around with. All of my friends are still at university. Like, let's just see where this goes. And like very quickly, I started working with brands for the blog because I would blog my outfits, for instance. So we we would film about six weeks before. So then by the time it aired, it was about six weeks later. And then I would upload my outfits. So brands wanted to start like dressing me and working with me on that. And it was just, it just kind of went from there. And, and before I knew it, I was like seven years in and I was like, right, it's time to leave. <laughs> really? Seven yeah. years? But, I mean, um, it was about seven years, yeah. I think. What yeah. I get from that is that you clearly take risks, like going on to a TV show, you've taken a risk. Yeah. Starting your business, you've taken a risk. And I think 
it's important I think people listening is taking risks is is really beneficial yeah Um, definitely I think also you know you never want to look back and regret not doing something in life and also from making mistakes that's how you learn Mm -hmm. so you can learn from mistakes and I just you know I did the show and I thought you know I, I want to um I mean, make some money and save up and start a business, basically. And I didn't know exactly at the beginning what it was going to be, but I knew it was a great platform to start getting a following and yeah. also to, you know, be paid sometimes stupid amounts of money from brands to yeah. do things or turn up to events that I could then quick quickly save up to start a business instead of it taking years and years and years and years. It enabled me to do it faster. Yeah. So I really went into it with a business mind. And, yeah. you know, I didn't date on the show. And I, because I was just like, this isn't about, you know, mm. my private life. Mm-hmm. And I kind of had a bit of control over that because I did the pilot and I started from the beginning. So, yeah. Yeah. No, you're a good addition. Your Thank one-liners you. and things like that. <laughs> really I also funny. just like I didn't care. Yeah. I didn't want to be liked by everyone. Like everyone calling me pale at the beginning. Like I didn't care. Great. Yeah. I am pale. And what? I don't want to look like everyone else. Mm. I am different. And yeah, I just I didn't really care what people thought. Yeah. I wasn't. I didn't want to be liked. I didn't do it to be liked. Yeah. So. I think that's just an amazing mindset to have. But I think it's so important. Like when I bring up children, I I want them to work hard, be independent, be themselves and to live life for themselves and not to be liked and not to do things to be liked by the public. Like I don't know the public. Why would I want them to like me? You know what I mean? (laughs) I'd rather be happy and be myself because I think you're never going to be happy if you try and be somebody that you're not. And you'll never yeah. regret it either. Like, yeah. you're not going to look back and be like, oh gosh, why did yeah, I do you that? Would only, yeah, you would only dress like that. Yeah, you would only regret being somebody that wasn't true to yeah. yourself. So, yeah. What a nice answer. <laughs> I like that. You said you went in um, with a business mind. Yeah. Was social media a huge thing back then? Not at all. I don't know whether Instagram even existed mm. at the very beginning. Maybe did i think it came out around then yes i think it was just around then it was more like blogs were big back then or turning big like starting um so did kind of every all the cast members have were they did they have blogs and no it was just me um so you were being paid by people to blog your outfits is that what you said? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so different to now, isn't it? Because people don't blog well, now really. It's well, yeah, now, now blogging's a gone. Picture mm. instead of writing a exactly, blog. exactly, and now it's more just um, Instagram, quick, fast. Yeah, you know, yeah, the quick videos. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. There's a lot of stuff out there now. Yeah. Do you find that hard with your business, kind of keeping on top of all the? the reels and the tiktoks and all of that stuff i mean we tried tiktok for a bit call me ancient (laughs) but it's so loud i can't i I can't like i'm just like i live with an airpod like in my ear in the office and you know if someone calls i just don't want it distracting others in the office or whatever so i always have an airpod in and i remember when we had gone on to tiktok to like experiment with it and we got an intern in to like make the videos Mm -hmm. And I'm scrolling through it and I'm like, oh my God, it's so loud. (laughs) It drove me mad. There's a lot going on. And we gave it up and I just thought, you know, I just can't be asked. And and I don't want to employ somebody full time to manage it. That seems mental. (laughs) I'm sure there's other avenues we can go down, but we are getting into wheels more because the videos are so nice. And it's so nice to actually just see the jewelry on, see it sparkle and not just have it as like a flat picture. So, um, and I'm sure for you guys as well, like the videos, like showing people around a curated room is like an yeah. amazing way to give them an experience of the brand. Yeah. So we want our viewers to know the trendiest spots and cool places you've been recently. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, what's on your list? Like where have you been hanging out? What restaurants, members clubs or? So there's a new ish members club called Maison Estelle that mm-hmm. my twin sister's a member of, convenient. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Do I've you, been going Are you to. identical? No, we're not, oh, sadly. Not um, well, I've been going there a lot and I love it. The food's good, it's a really good vibe. You can wear jeans, which I love on a night out. I hate that it's always like, oh, you have to wear a dress. Like, yeah. I don't want to slag off Annabelle's, but like, <laughs> the clientele's not fat. Yeah. Um, so, love Maison Estelle. <laughs> My favorite restaurant is Gold in Notting Hill. 
the vibes amazing cocktails are amazing the food is just unbelievable what cuisine is it so it's kind of all on a an open fire um they do this amazing like brick chicken that's got a kind of spicy sauce um burrata with um parma ham and oh, um peaches Ooh. They do this amazing polenta thing with like a blue cheese. Oh, I'm dribbling. Really? Um, and <laughs> Try that. You sold it to me. And I love La Familia, uh, just off the King's yeah. Road, for spaghetti vongole all day, every day. What's with, spaghetti vongole? It's with clams. Oh, okay. Garlic, clams, oh. olive oil, and loads of fresh chili. Mm. What about places, where would you go to kind of, like I said, with your business, you like to kind of relax yeah. a bit, take your mind off everything. Where would you go to do that? So, well, when I was doing my Goldman Sachs program, I would go to Soho House quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I'd go to White City and then work and then have a kind of sauna and read a book in the evening, which was quite nice. Um, I don't often take myself away to work on my own because um, I'm happy just to really work in the office, but yeah, maybe Soho House or... Um, Soho Farmhouse? Maybe. Love Soho Farmhouse, but it involves a lot of drinking. Yeah. I've only ever had one chilled weekend there. I had my 30th <laughs> birthday there with my sister, which was oh, really nice. good fun. Um, I'm but, due a visit. Because it's a bit further afield, you have to stay. And so it's like, why yeah, not? Yeah, exactly. Just it's just the dream. You just run yeah. riot and drink loads. Do you <laughs> hang much in Chelsea now? Um, yeah, I do. I live in Fulham and uh, I'm always hanging around the area. Where else is really good? Oh, shall I tell you? There's a pub on the King's Road called the Cadogan Arms. Yeah. And I'm allergic to gluten, but they do gluten free, like a popcorn chicken. Oh, really? Ooh. As a starter. And every time I go, I have like two. Wow. They are so good. If yeah. I find good gluten free food, I'm like, right, give it to me. Is it hard to find good gluten free food? Fried food, yeah, because mm. normally the batter is gluten it's mm, like yeah. flour um so gluten-free chicken there oh, i need it i need to book in <laughs> so good i love china tang at the dorchester for chinese great cocktails too and i love scots nice. um what's your favorite lunch. cocktail um do you know what i'm really into tequila on the rocks at the moment which is not a cocktail Ooh. but it's very warm in the evening i love yeah. tequila but I think tequila it is, on the rocks I don't know yeah. I need to try it probably it's meant to be like the best alcohol for you tequila it's like the purest yeah form. I mean Casamigos on the rocks on my own at home in the evening while I do a bit of work <laughs> heaven um, but if I'm out then um, lychee martini mm. I like a picante or a margarita yeah so do I but cut the sugar yeah I like if I have something citrusy then I like loads of fresh lime yeah really like sour yeah some of them they can put a lot of agave in and it's yeah. quite sweet but it's funny that i say that but i like a light martini which is full yeah. of sugar but like if i'm gonna go sweet let's go sweet but if it's got lime involved it can't have sugar too mm. tequila on the rocks i might try that later try <laughs> loads of ice just slowly sip it Heaven. yeah it's warm as well it feels warm in your body really that's how i justify nice. it anyway <laughs> it feels warm <laughs> so what are your top three favorite holiday destinations so every year I used to go to um, the south of France, to Provence, with my family. And I haven't been, I didn't go last year, so I'm really dying to go back next year. And we just grew up going there, and it's not sort of Saint-Tropez coast, really busy. It's inland, it's chill, it's beautiful. French markets to go to, to get oh, food. And lovely. again, great for inspiration, all the color. I love walking around a market. Um, I went to Greece in the summer with a friend, which was so lovely. Um, love Greek food. Same. Mm. So I went to Zakynthos, which I didn't really explore the island at all, but the hotel was amazing and it was perfect for just a few days away. What hotel was it? Olia All Suite. Okay. So I went there a couple oh, yeah. years ago in Deos Cove, but oh, okay. both very nice, yeah. I think. Yeah. The love food. Greek food. Oh my God. Feta, heaven, <laughs> just... Just being in the sun and eating, I, I'm obsessed with food. I mm -hmm. eat a lot, I love food, I love cooking. And I need to go to a destination where the food is good. I just went to Bali and the food there, again, is incredible. The restaurants, mm. the, the gluten-free options. They've got those like, beach, those restaurants on the beach, isn't Oh it? yeah, yeah. What's, what's it called, Buddha, is it? I went to one called Sundays, which was oh, lovely Sundays, in Uluwatu. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're thinking um, of potato head. Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. go there, but I know where that is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just uh, just anywhere in the sun. I mm-hmm. really want to go to Mexico again. I love tequila and I love Mexican food, <laughs> so perfect. it seems like it's the perfect fit. <laughs> If you could have three guests at your dinner party, who would they be? So, um, number one would be Louis Theroux. I am obsessed (laughs) with him. I'm a documentary geek. I love a good documentary. I love his new series. I love him, basically. I've watched every single documentary he's ever done. Oh, he's amazing. (laughs) He's amazing and he's really funny too. Um, Next would be someone like... Ramesh Ranganathan, he's hilarious. Yeah. You need a comedian. Yeah, yeah, you need and maybe like maybe he could bring his sidekick Rob as well. That would be great. <laughs> and Adele, maybe she could sing at the end. Sing at the end, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That's She'd a, be a good, that's a laugh. good three. Yeah. That would be a fun night out. <laughs> yes. <I think>. It <laughs> would. If you had to move house and you were only allowed to take three things with you, what would they be? Oh my god, this is so hard. Um it's really hard. I'm going to sound <laughs> awful and say something material. I just got a really cute mini Kelly, and <laughs> that's got to come with I'll you. I'll name her. She's in. She's a little, little like baby, like with mint. She's like a light mint green, and she's perfect. Oh, what is a mini <laughs> Kelly? Uh, it's a handbag. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I would take my jewelry box that has all of my Rosie Fortescue jewelry in it because. I think back, like only the, uh, only the other day, I thought back and I was like, oh my God, do I actually have one of everything? Even the stuff that we've discontinued because that's so important for memories, isn't yes. it? To show my children in the future. Um, so that would be key. And then- you, You've been clever there. You've done a well, box with all, all everything inside. <laughs> um, and then I would take um, a piece of art that I have in my flat. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So at Maverick, um, we've currently got three main collections: the Daintree, the which is um, this table is from, yeah, um, the Hakon and the Miro. Out of those three, what is your favourite, and what can you kind of would you have in your home? So the Miro is just totally my vibe. I absolutely adore it. Um, I love the accents of gold with the marble. It's so chic the like sort of oval soft round edges. I just love the shape and the cha- the chairs, the dining chairs as well mm-hmm. that go with the dining table are just, yeah, they are amazing. Thank you. And I would love to live in a bigger home where I could have <laughs> the huge table and all the chairs and just have people over the whole time and entertain. And I think a dining table, I obviously do have a dining table at home and I can actually fit eight people on it, but it's such a key focus of a house always and i love sitting at home with friends cooking eating chilling chatting i just it's such a key focus isn't it in in a a house and and in a home yeah and what is next for rosie fortescue have you got any exciting um collections coming out in the new year or any collaborations so uh i've got my valentine's collection coming out that we photographed that's super super exciting and yeah i'm already sampling new bits for next year nothing is set in stone yet which i kind of like because it kind of gives me the kick up the bum to really focus at the beginning of the year in january um but i don't have any crazy plans any exciting holidays um, I will be going to Paris with my sister in um, January because she's my twin. We're going to go away together. That's nice. And have a sisterly couple of days in Paris and nice. just eat, drink, and shop. Lovely. Heaven. The dream. We did that recently. Yeah. Did you? You and yeah. Charlotte. Oh, cute. Yeah. We yeah. went to the furniture exhibition. There, yeah. So that's where <laughs> we went. Obviously. But um, no, Paris is a lovely place. Mm. So, well, so yeah. nice. Beautiful. Yeah. So, so thank you for joining us today. We do have a gift for you. Oh, thank you. It comes in a big <gasps> box. That is so sweet. Do you want me to open it? You Go can on then. Open it, okay. yeah. It's always a bit awkward opening <laughs> gifts in front of people, isn't it? Oh my God, wow. <gasps> this is divine. So it's 100% merino wool oh, and it's thank it's very you so soft. much love that that is going to be so nice at home <laughs> for my cozy Keep evenings thank you <laughs> you're so welcome thank you thank for coming you so in much. Yeah, really thank you nice. so much